Hey, welcome to another episode of One More Rep with Coach Walker. I'm your host, Coach Walker, and today we are talking about the value of a strength coach. So we're going to talk about this from primarily from a financial standpoint. We're going to talk about what we do with strength in, in, in the weight room with the players and all that other stuff. But today we're talking about the, the financial side of things, and specifically because maybe, I think it's July 6th, the head strength and conditioning coach for the Oklahoma for Oklahoma State University, he finally was he's he's become the first strength and conditioning coach to be paid a million dollars at the collegiate level, and I think that makes him the highest paid strength and conditioning coach to date on a on a yearly salary basis. Now that's a great day for strength and conditioning for strength and conditioning coaches across the country because it now raises the bar and it puts a spotlight on what strength and conditioning coaches bring to the table and basically values them in the same capacity as other coaches that are on the team and not just saying, okay, here's the $19,000 a year or $20,000 or $30,000 a year to put in 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week working with the team, doing a crap ton of work and not and making pennies on a dollar. So it's great that he has this he got this money and he's getting paid what he's worth. But on the backside of things, he's been in his role for 30 years. Coaches, head coaches, and other position coaches that have come and gone probably have made what he's making and then some. So as a strength and conditioning coach, you take that with a grain of salt because it's great. The bar is finally being raised, but it took him in his role, thirty for in, in that specific role with the same school, thirty years, three decades, a light, uh, adulthood for a lot of people. Like there are kid, there are people who are born in two thousand that are not thirty years old. So it took him a lifetime for some uh, a quarter more than a quarter century to get to this point. And we look at it and we celebrate it, and it should be celebrated because now. Other strength and conditioning coaches that are doing the same level of work, having the same level of success, can negotiate from this place like a quarterback in the NFL. The highest paid guy now sets the bar. Now we that's our point. That's our point of negotiating, our starting point for negotiation. But when you look across the board for strength and conditioning coaches, and um, when I got in the field 14 years ago now. A lot of this information was not just free, freely floating around, or maybe I was not looking in the right places. But when you get into the, the one, the the guiding principles or the philosophies that is hugely flawed is you have to pay your dues. And what does paying your dues look like for this field? People think paying you have been brainwashed to think that paying your dues means working 50, 60 hours a week. Coming in five eight for a five eight a.m. workout, staying to nine p.m. at night, not spending time with your family the way you should, missing birthdays, holidays, family events, and you're making fifteen thousand dollars a year. Well, let's even give you a range. Let's say ten thousand to thirty thousand dollars a year, because the job still posted in twenty twenty one. You can find jobs that want you to work a full forty hour week minimum. And they want they want to pay you fifteen to twenty five thousand dollars a year, and on top of it, they want you to have five years of experience, a master's degree, and that experience should be at the D one level, at the professional level, and it's you wonder like what are these people smoking because you are asking for credentials. And you for high level credentials for the work to be put in, and oh yeah, by the way, we're gonna pay you peanuts. In what world does that make sense? And I'll tell you the strength and conditioning world because the the coaches, the old school coaches, and some of the newer coaches, they buy into that mess. I'm on, I'll be on forums and in Facebook groups and have these arguments or have these comments. And that the the good thing about it is the newer coaches or some of the coaches who are not stupid <laughs> when it comes to compensation. They're not buying into this mentality of, oh, I got to pay your dues means struggling to eat top ramen and, and crackers for dinner to make it to, to get by. Or you paying me $10,000 $10, a year and you, OK, we're going to give you room and board. That's not enough. 
I'm not, a lot of these coaches, they're not 19, 18, 19, 21 years old. They are 30 years old. 20, let's even go 25 to 35 years old. And they have a wife, a kid, kids maybe. And you say, okay, feed your family off of this. But also have a master's degree. Also have five years experience. Also have publications behind your name or research behind your name. And it blows my mind that schools don't understand that we are as valuable as every other coach on the team because we have more touch points with the players. We spend more time with the players because they have to come work out. If you're a D1, D2, you have, workouts are almost mandatory, especially if you are a competitive program. Workouts are the, the foundation because it keeps you healthy, it keeps you strong, it keeps you on the field. If you're not on the field, you're in the you're in the you're on the sideline rehabbing either with the athletic trainer or the strength and conditioning coaches or a combination of the two. And for people to just now start to realize that this is a valuable position, that it requires the same level of compensation. It is disheartening that it took so long, but it is heartening to find out that it is starting to happen. Because let's look at the value of a strength and conditioning coach from what they bring to the table. In the in the collegiate setting and in the private sector. Because at the end of the day, it, what we do is, across, well, no, no matter where we're located at, is pretty much the same. Our job, if we look at it correctly, is injury, re, injury minimization and performance optimization. We want to make sure that we are minimizing the risk of injury on and off the field as much as possible with the player being smart about what they're doing in the weight room, what they're doing outside of the, the actual training. But then also we are trying to make sure that the player can be as good as they can be on the field by making sure that they're functioning the right way, their movement patterns are proper, their flexibility is there, mobility is there, all those things are in place. But then with those two things, with the optimization and the, the injury minimization in place, we are creating availability. We are making sure that these players are available for the entire season and healthy for the entire season. Again, we are working alongside athletic trainers in this aspect but because it, it's a collaborative effort. So, those, so when you look at it, if you are hiring a coach such as myself outside of your child's sports sports training with their teams, it's more than, okay, I charge X amount of dollars for, for the session. And a lot of people look at it, you're trading money for time or for the minutes. And it's and that mentality leads people to bypass from the condition or think or think of it less because it's because they, the, the the thought process is wrong. What you're trading money for is the knowledge base that has been gained and cultivated over 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years plus in a lot of cases. You're paying for your child who train smarter, harder, and more effectively with the risk of injury minimized because you have somebody who has done the work, who's a professional, who brings years of experience and what on the on the job on the job experience where they've applied the knowledge so they know what works. They know where injuries will, what things will lead to injury, what things will, if there is an injury, they should have the ability to rehab some of those injuries within the scope of practice, obviously, or they have the connect, the window, the network of people that they can refer you to if an injury should happen. But the risk of injury is minimized because they've done the work. They've done the work that you don't have to do. It's the same reason you go to a doctor or any type of professional, a mechanic, because they know how to get the job done in a way that you don't. And if you go to this, this professional, this strength and conditioning professional, that's what you should expect. Whether you train with me, high power performance, or you train with anybody else, that's what you should expect. Um, and that's what the value of a strength and conditioning coach is. They 
optimize performance. We optimize performance. We minimize the risk of injury. We increase the level of availability throughout an entire season. Whether the season is just 10 games, 15 games, your team is regularly in the playoffs. If you play your regular school sport and you play a, t a club sport, our job is to make sure that you are available and we train you smart and get you ready. If you are a high schooler, a high school athlete and you want to play on a collegiate level, if you're a collegiate athlete, athlete and you have aspirations of going to the next level or the professional level, our job is to make sure that you are physically ready alongside of what the other coaches are doing. It's a, again, it's, it's like the human body. It's nothing is independent of another part. It's everything is inter, inter, interdependent and it goes the same for us. Like I, whenever I have my, my clients come in, specifically my athletes, I ask them, what are you doing outside this? If they're training with somebody else specifically, like specifically another strength and conditioning coach or just for sport in general, what are your training sessions look like? Are they meeting your needs? Like what do you feel like you're doing there versus here? Is it, are you, did you squat this week or do, what, what does that look like? What did the workout look like so I can make sure that I'm planning something that complements and not just collides with what you are, with what you already did because that makes no sense. So the, so my value comes in understanding that conversations need to happen before we just jump into a workout. My value comes in understanding that everybody has a different starting point. And everybody has a different goal for what they're trying to accomplish, whether you are a weekend warrior or you are a high level athlete that wants to play on the highest of level and highest of levels and you want to perform at the highest of levels. At the end of the day, what this coach has achieved is a huge accomplishment. But there's an article on training and conditioning.com, and they also have a magazine that they send out specific to this. And one of the tweets that's quoted in the article is Some D1 full time strength coaches make $19,600 a year. Some D1 full time strength coaches make a million dollars a year. What a gap. Let's close that gap. Um, this is, I've been Coach Walker with one more rep. Train like you mean it, maximize, improve, excel, take care of yourself, continue to work hard, and I'll talk to you later.